Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I have been talking a lot about the Onion Skin Journal. And the most frequently asked question is, how do you journal on this translucent paper? And if you're new to the Onion Skin Journal, it is made from, I believe, paper pulp, some sort of tree pulp. Um, and it creates this kind of beautiful translucent paper to write on and it's really absorbent. It takes fountain pen ink very well, at least so far with what I've used. The only problem uh, with ink drying time that I've had is with the Sailor Manyo Haha ink and that took a long time to dry and I was using a medium nib on it. Um, but uh, drying time on it is pretty much like nothing. And, um, but the number one question I get is, how do you journal on translucent paper? So I'm going to show you some examples, kind of ways of working around it that I know of, uh, that I've done before, because if you followed me for a while, I journal on trace paper all the time. I've made trace paper inserts for December daily, and I absolutely love journaling on translucent things, vellum paper, trace paper, um, like deli paper, which is kind of like that super thin uh, paper. I love it. I just love the look of it. And so I kind of wanted to show you examples of what I'm doing to uh, to do that, to maximize the space basically, and um, kind of give you a flip through of examples. Uh, so I'm currently in journal 157. So yes, I have 157 journals and this is what I'm using currently. And I basically took the approach of trying to maximize as much writing space as possible so I can take advantage of the paper. I didn't want to cover it up if I didn't have to because the whole point of my getting this journal was to actually be able to use the paper and not, not collage over it too much. So I used a lot of vellum and clear elements. If you have this journal, I would say this is the time to really break out all of your kind of clear translucent elements. Washi stickers, washi like sticker flakes, uh, vellum stickers and vellum pieces, vellum paper, um, all sorts of different things. like. At least what I wanted to do was just kind of bring out the airiness and the lightness of the paper. And so that's kind of what I did. So here I've got um, vellum, which I stamped on. And I added a lot of tip-ins too, so that way I wasn't covering up the paper. And, uh, you know, being able to just use the paper itself. So in the beginning, to, to show you back to the first page, um, I was still experimenting, uh, so that's why I really wasn't doing anything on the other side of the paper. I used vellum again here as a tip-in with a quote from Hemingway. Um, so the first few pages I'm still kind of playing around with it. And my approach was also to have, like I have this kind of vellum washi where it's so translucent that you can see it from this side, but you can also see the background here to kind of give it a little bit more to this little vellum piece that I added here with a washi sticker. And then I've got washi stickers here, washi sticker, these like kitta washies that are kind of translucent so you can kind of see it from the back. So I really kind of experimented with how things looked before I actually put them down. And then another vellum tip in here. So there was a bit of pre-planning, but that's just kind of how I approached it. Obviously you can do whatever you want, but this is a vellum or like a washi sticker here. These are all like vellum images from like paper pads that I've gotten from AliExpress. Tip ins so I can, you know, so it just kind of covers up the writing, but I can still lift it up and see the writing itself and use the paper. So once again, I didn't really do much here, just kind of backed the images here with other images. 
I've got, like this is vellum washi here. Our vellum stickers. I don't even know where I got that. I think that was a freebie. This is like clear translucent tape. So any of like your clear tape that you've got, this is the time to be able to utilize that. And then my approach here was I had this vellum piece here and then I had this paper on the back already stamped, but then I stamped on the back of that. So when I glued it down, I could see the image. And then the paper holds up really well. Here I'm trying out different inks. So this is the Sailor ink that took a long time to actually dry. And then it kind of, I don't know if you can see that, it just kind of bleeds through a little bit. So I'm not gonna be using my Sailor ink on this um, just because it didn't quite take. So you can kind of see it's not as crisp of writing, but for the most part, I journaled with Deatramentus Document Fog Gray, which is one of my favorite inks. And personally, I think it's the perfect ink color for this notebook. It's coming off more like royal blue on camera, but it's actually more of like a muted cobalt, maybe blue. It's a beautiful blue color and it just kind of gives it that old book feel. And it, I felt like the document fog gray, which is this color here, here that you're seeing, goes really well with the cover. So I have a beer label here, so obviously I did cover up a little bit. Stickers that my daughter put on my arm. A bunch of photos that I tipped in here. I wasn't sure at first if I wanted to put in photos to bulk it up, but in the end, I didn't want to have a separate photo album of that in a different notebook. So lots of tip-ins, see? So still, I'm not really, you know, writing on the other side because I wasn't sure how I felt about that. Um, more vellum tip-ins here, a washi sticker here. And then here I'm experimenting with yellow ink to see how it looks. Another tip in here. And then here, because I have this beer label on the back, I was able to use my yellow ink. This is J. Urban's yellow ink. I can't remember what it's called. Bouton d'Or, is that what it's called? Um, so I continued to journal with just yellow ink here, and then I'm experimenting with different inks here. So I've got Diamine, Gold Star. This is Deatramentous Jane Austen, which I think is an excellent ink to use, and I plan on getting the green Onion Skin Journal cover, the one with the map imprinted on the front, and I'm gonna plan on using the Jane Austen ink with that. And then the Platinum Carbon ink uh, did really well on this paper as well. And all the drying times were excellent. So see, once again, it's this kind of like vellum tape that has the image. And then I can also see it from the back here. And it kind of adds to it. And then I can kind of see the image from the back on this vellum piece here. And then I started moving into darker inks because I wanted to see how that performed. This is Noodler's Walnut Brown, and I really liked the look of that. Once again, drying time was very fast. And then on the back, I journaled with Platinum Carbon Black, which is a permanent ink. And maps, vintage maps, um, look great on this paper because obviously you've got, both sides are printed. So I had that as a background piece here, and then you can see it in the back here. And another vellum tip-in, so I started doing some collaging here. And then now I started journaling on the other side of the paper. So I'm finding that if you journal with a darker ink, you'll be able to see it from both sides. Not so much if you're journaling with a lighter ink, it's a little harder to read. And funny enough, in the daytime, it, it is a little harder to read on both sides, even with a darker ink. But at night, as like the sun is setting at dusk, 
you can really see the letters jump out at you. So it's it's almost like a performative journal. Uh, it looks different in different kinds of light, and I think that's really, really fun. Um, more tippins, music paper, vintage music paper. Once again, because it's double-sided, I have it collaged here, but then I can also see it in the background here. And this is a piece back here that has the actual image of it, and I actually pasted that part down, and then I flipped it back so the back part is blank and I can journal over it. So there's a little bit of playing around and kind of gluing things down backward to kind of see if I can see the image come through. And that's been really fun. Um, and I also stamped on the back of that paper so I can kind of see that word jump out um, in the background kind of as like a subtle piece of like decoration on my paper. And I did the same right here with this piece. I stamped on the back and then I glued it down so I can actually see those images there. Um, so now I'm starting to utilize the paper both sides. And so I hope that gives you an idea of kind of how I'm approaching this paper. And sometimes I have stamped, if I really want the words to stand out from an image or a stamp, I leave it blank on both sides. I'll stamp the one side and then I won't touch the other side so I can actually see it. Another tip in here. So this is back to document fog gray. And this is all like vellum pieces that I've kind of overlapped over my journaling. So it's sort of, I guess, tipped in in a way like that. Um, I have these kind of like printed vellum pieces that have designs on them already. So I added those as tip-ins, vintage book page. So that way on the back, I can kind of see the illustration comes through. Another kind of vellum piece overlapped here. And these are the pages obviously that I haven't filled out yet. So I have this vintage like paper that's been written on and I kind of just overlapped it here so that way I can see it through the back as that background piece, but then I can also utilize this and journal over it here. This was cut out from an old children's book, so it's got that nice text on the back that I can also see as well. And that's really fun. More vellum pieces that are translucent, so it just kind of comes through this paper here. Those vellum images are coming through here. Vellum piece here. The crinkle on this paper is wonderful. I love the look and feel of just this kind of paper. It's, there have been times I've sat there, because sometimes I journal at night while I watch TV with my husband. There are some times where I'm just like flipping through it because I just absolutely love hearing the crinkle of the paper, um, playing with all the, I guess, like the interaction that I've kind of added to it. Um, it's, it's certainly a different type of paper. And I can see that it could be a little intimidating for someone who's not journaled on this kind of paper before. But um, I, I absolutely love it. It's a dream to write on. Another kind of tip and vellum piece. These are washi stickers, so it kind of adds to that kind of translucent feel. Printed vellum here, old book paper or um, writing paper here, so you can see the writing come through on the back. More washi stickers. I wanted it to just be very light. Oh, printed vellum here. 
and that's it. That's what I've got filled so far. Um, so obviously, um, you've heard me like wax poetry about this so much on Instagram. And I absolutely love this journal. I'm definitely going to be buying it again. I did pay for this myself, so this wasn't uh, like a paid review or anything. I just love this journal so much and I wanted to show you examples of how to utilize it if you are thinking about getting this notebook and you're just unsure of how to go about filling the pages. I would say journal as you normally journal. Fill it the way you normally do it because just because it's translucent doesn't mean that you are limited to any sort of creativity. Absolutely not. I think it actually opens up different ways to create in it and I think that's really fun. So I am very happy that such a journal exists in this world. I'm so very happy that I have this in my possession to use because once this is done, this is just going to be a beautiful journal to keep. And I absolutely love it. So I highly recommend this journal if you are uh, interested and you want something just absolutely beautiful and such a treat to use. Anyway, I hope this gave you some ideas, and if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy journaling!